Today I'm working on these three dents at the top of this Hyundai tailgate. Without using any filler or paint, I'll show you all the steps it took to turn this into this. Hi everyone, it's Jake here from First Track Dents and welcome along for another paintless dent removal video. So today we're looking at the tailgate on this 2017 Hyundai i10. So looking at the panel here, there are three main areas of damage. Now to remove one dent on its own takes a tremendous amount of skill and a lot of patience, but to remove three dents so close together is going to be even more difficult. So I'm gonna show you my preferred method of how I would carry out this type of repair. But first, Let's take a closer look at this damage. So let's pan across all of this damage and look first at these two minor dents on the right hand side. The dent furthest to the right is a small singular crease, whereas the second dent to the left of this one is slightly more complex and looks like a couple of sharp impressions in one complete dent. This dent has pushed a borderline upwards as shown by this red line, creating an upward crease on top just in front of the rear glass. So moving back over to the largest of these three dents here on the left, we can see that this dent is much more complex than the other two. It has a crease that branches off in what looks like five directions as shown here in red. This dent also has a crown surrounding the entire perimeter as shown here in yellow. So the next stage is to remove the internal trim to check the access from behind. So this is a fairly easy trim to remove. Inside the handle area here, there is a single Phillips screw, which has to be removed. Once this is removed, it allows me to easily pop off the internal trim. So looking inside this tailgate, you can see that there's plenty of access for my tools. However, I've decided to try and reduce some of this damage first using some glue pulling. So before I can glue pull, I need to clean the panel with an alcohol solution to ensure good adhesion with my glue tabs. So first I'm going to stick some medium tight glue tabs to this larger dent to draw some of the sharper areas up. I'm also sticking a couple of black ice tabs to the smaller dents here on the right of the panel. So using the slide hammer, I pull on the glue tabs, which helps to pull the dents out. Then to remove the tabs from the panel, I use my alcohol solution. So for the second round of glue pulling, I'm sticking some more of these black ice tabs on the panel. For these tabs, you don't have to wait too long before you can pull. I pull them just as the glue has set, but it's slightly tacky. Again, I use the alcohol solution to remove the tabs and any glue residue from the panel. Now I need to address some of these high areas where the glue tab has pulled the metal up slightly too high. This is normal when trying to pull up sharp dents as the surrounding soft metal is pulled up higher than the center. After tapping down these high areas, it's time for another round of glue pulling. Again, I'm using the black ice taps. Once a glue pull has been achieved, the tabs and the glue are removed from the panel and any high areas are knocked back down. So before I go in with the PDR bars, I first need to stabilize the panel so it doesn't move around with the heavy forces used when pushing the dent out. To do this, I use my support prop in conjunction with my ratchet strap. Although the glue pulling did pull up some of these low areas, I decided that it would be more efficient and quicker to go behind with the PDR bars. 
Glue pulling is great, don't get me wrong, but continuing with the glue pulling would add more time than was needed onto this repair. So for nearly all of this repair, I'm using this bar from Ultra Dent Tools called a Bendable Johnson, and I'm starting off by using a nylon tip. I'll link this tool below in the description. I'm using some heat here to soften the paint so that it doesn't crack from the pushes behind. So I'm lifting up the low areas with my tool tip and I'm moving around in what looks like random movements, but to me, I'm actually pushing this dent up in a motion that will bring this dent out cleanly. Some parts of the dent will come out higher than the level of the panel, but by using my nylon tap down, I'll tap these areas down and start the pushing cycle all over again until I'm happy that the dent is roughed out enough. For now, I'm happy with this first dent. Time to move on to the adjacent dent. As before, heat is important here as this dent will need some heavy pushes, particularly on the top body line. As the top body line is moving back into position, it allows me to tap back down the upwards crease just in front of the window glass. I had to spend quite a bit of time on this dent as some of the metal was very tight and difficult to push out. Okay, so I'm happy that this dent has come out enough. Now we're going to move on to the larger and more complex dent. So when I have dents so close together on a panel like this, I like to use a three-step process to remove them. Now this is a diagram of the dents that we're working on today. This is the largest of the dents, A, and B and C are the smaller dents. And at the edges of these dents, we have these crowns here. Now because of the way metal moves, if you were to try and come in and push up each dent perfectly before moving on to the next dent, you'll start running into problems. This is because as soon as you push up the first dent and get it out perfect and move on to the second one, this will have an effect on the first one and so on and so forth with the third one affecting the second one. And you'll find that you just keep going around in circles getting nowhere and the job will take so much longer. So with the three step process that I use, step one of the process, is where I push out each dent to about 80% using a mixture of pushing, tapping down, glue pulling, etc. Don't spend a lot of time on this step and you'll notice that there will still be some high areas on the panel. Step two is the blending process. This is where we use a mixture of blending hammers or various knockdowns to smooth out all the uneven areas on the panel. At this point, the panel will be relatively straight, but there will be some texture to the panel. This is in the form of micro highs and micro lows that will need to be addressed. So for this, we'll use some very sharp tools and very sharp tap downs in step three, which is the, the fine detail step, and we smooth out the panel so that it's nice and straight again. Well, I hope that explains my three-step process, but now let's get back to the repair. So after the glue pull in, I was only really left with this low area here and a few small indentations around it. So I'm using my nylon tip to lift this area up. This dent is very stubborn, so it needs a lot of manipulation in the form of lifting up and tapping back down again. So as you can see, the dent is now reducing to lots of smaller dents, which would have taken far too long to remove with the glue pull in. So here I'm changing to a nylon tip to bring up some of the smaller, sharper areas that have been left behind from removing this large dent. I'm moving my position all around the damage to blend the lifted metal together and to make sure the panel looks level from all viewing angles. So here I'm happy with the blending process so far. Now it's time to get on with the fine tuning. This is the stage where the tools become sharper as we only have all the little micro load to lift up. This is probably the longest time spent on the repair 
because it is a painstaking task which needs a huge amount of accuracy and a tremendous amount of patience. You don't just have to be accurate with your pushes, you also have to be very accurate with your tapping down too. Because I'm working on such fine detail, for this part I always like to make sure my tap down is as sharp as a pin, so I sharpen it using some very fine paper. So just as I thought I'd finished, I spotted this small penny sized dent just below the badge. This was easily removed by using one of my small bars from A1 Tools. As before, I'll link this tool in the description. Whilst removing the small dent under the badge, I noticed some overspray in the corner here, which I think was from a previous bumper repair. So I removed this with some 3M Ultra Fine Polish. So the last thing to do is to clip the internal trim back into place, replace the Phillips screw we removed earlier, close the tailgate and check out the final result. Once again, everyone, I really appreciate you coming along this repair with me. I hope you found it interesting and maybe even entertaining. If you did like the video, it'd be great to get a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell to be kept in touch with all the latest videos. I'm hoping the next video might be a workshop-based making video, but we'll have to see how the week goes. But for now, I really look forward to seeing you all on the next video.